right, I think we are live. Happy Wednesday and Ask Snaps Day. Y'all, I'm going to give you a minute to, to jump on. If you're joining the replay and watching the replay, welcome. In today's video, we're going to go over how to talk to Google bots um, and really speak the language that Google speaks when they're out there and their bots are indexing and crawling sites and uh, how you don't have to be super technical, especially with the tools that we put together with Snap. So I'm going to give you guys a minute to hop on here. As y'all are hopping in, post in the comments, say, hey, do me a favor in the description. So we're trying something new here, um, using a new platform to broadcast and get everybody's questions answered. So there should be in the description of the post, a uh, it says, hey, go to streamyard.com forward slash Facebook. Uh, if you click on that little link, it's going to ask for permission to connect your Facebook account to StreamYard. And basically what that allows is when you play, make a comment in the post, we get to see who you are. Uh, and so that is going to um, uh, help me see all of your comments and questions and better handle some of this Q&A. So I think this is going to be a better experience for, for Q&A moving forward and excited to, to get rolling with it. What's up, Erica, Andrew? Love seeing you guys on here. Yeah, it looks like we already have, yeah, we have 29 people hopping on. Um, go ahead and, and, and ping a friend, tag a friend. We're streaming into a couple different places now. Now that uh, Snaps has exploded onto the scene out in the rest of the world, um, we're going live on the Snaps Facebook page as well into a couple of training groups. So uh, question is, will this be recorded? Uh, yes, absolutely. This is going to be recorded and will be replayed either in the training group that you were a part of or on the Facebook uh, Snaps page. But do me a favor, like it says right below here, um, grant StreamYard permission so I can see your comments when you're commenting in the post. And to do that, just go to StreamYard.com forward slash Facebook. There should also be a link in the description that you can click on to quickly authenticate. Uh, but wanted to let you know, we're going to be going over schema markup today and structured data. If you don't know what that is, welcome to the club. It's all right. You don't need to be super technical. I'm going to get into the ins and outs. Really, at the end of the day, what it has to do with is making sure that your website, whether it's a lead gen site or your agency site or your blog or whatever, is set up in such a way that Google understands what your site is all about. We want to make it easy for Google to crawl our site for Google to then take the information on our site and serve it up to uh, people that are searching for stuff, right? Because that, that's that's how we get traffic is by, you know, ranking pages and websites to the top of Google and some of the other search engines. And Google's gotten really smart over the years. You know, back in the day, it used to be just about, you know, going out and blasting a bunch of content, getting links from where wherever you could, doing things like, stuffing a bunch of keywords onto a page and making the text white and your background white and you, they wouldn't even see it. So it didn't kind of mess with the user experience. Google's bots have gotten a lot smarter these days. And so you got to make sure that your your site is up to snuff. And fortunately with Snaps, we, we make that happen. So now that we're hitting kind of a critical mass, I'm going to get into it. I'm going to go over schema markup and some of the stuff that was promised in the, in the description about how do you talk to Google bots? How do you set up your site and uh, leverage some of the new features that we now have available in snaps a lot of you have already kind of stumbled onto and started working with the local business schema which we're going to get into beyond that there are some other widgets that we can actually start using schema with as well too to have some really cool structured data so we're going to get into that if we've got time i'm going to answer some questions too so if you've got questions go ahead and pop them into the chat but like i said make sure that you um, go ahead and uh, give permission to Streamyard so that i can do this and say hey look Lou says, just catching up on Google Analytics, set up some schema today, super easy. Glad to hear it, Lou. See, even before the, the train, we try to set things up in such a way where it's like, you're just gonna be able to, to get, get rolling with it. It's why we chose the dev partners that we have. And uh, just so you know too, uh, for, for those of you already in Snaps, most of you probably are and building in Snaps, um, we, we have a facelift coming. So there's some super exciting stuff coming down, like literally, I think tomorrow, um, you should see a facelift on snaps tomorrow. So, um, stay tuned for that. All right. So without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and we are going to get into, you know, what is schema in the first place? Let me go ahead. And as I'm, uh, using this 
for the first time. All right, there we go. I'm going to share my screen. And boom. Okay, so now we have screenception. All right, so what is schema markup? All that schema is is structured data. And if you go to Google Search Central and the developers portal, they've got this whole um, technical, <laughs> it's probably a pretty intimidating page to look at when you're looking at something like this. But let me um, kind of break it down to the, the, bare, the bare bones here, these first two sentences. Google Search works hard to understand the content of a page, of your page on your site, right? You can help us by providing explicit clues about the meaning of a page to Google by including structured data on that page. So what is structured data? This right here is structured data. This is code that tells Google the information that is on a page. Now, if you're super technical and you can write in HTML and JavaScript and all these other coding languages, great, you're, you're probably fine. And there is some training already on how to do that kind of stuff. With Snaps, we've made it more kind of like user-friendly and click button simple. Uh, to get this code into your site. But let me show you what uh, schema and, and structured data looks like in the real world, because this is gonna become ever more important. And this goes beyond just the basics of like name, address, phone number, which we're gonna show on, on this particular live. But if I did a search for chocolate lava cake recipe, let's say I'm, I'm getting hungry, I want something sweet, I, I wanna find a chocolate lava cake recipe. What is showing up here in the top, these recipes are all structured data. This um, is a recipe, it looks from Sally's Baking Addiction, from Food and Wine Magazine and Food Network. Let's say I click onto the Food Network article. This is just a normal blog post, a normal page, but what Food Network has done is they have included some schema, they've included some of this, this structured data, they've included some of this code, right? And that code says, hey Google, here's, here's what's on this page. Here's some ingredients. This this page is a recipe. This content is a recipe. So it's giving it some explicit clues about what is on that page, right? And, and who doesn't love some um, chocolate lava cake? Obviously, Google is looking to provide an incredible user experience. Somebody searches chocolate lava cake, they want to make it really easy. They, they, they're showing me a photo. They're showing me some of the basics. They're showing me the, the, the ratings, you know, 3.1 thousand, you know, 3,100 reviews. Uh, this is going to be a better user experience. So obviously they're going to show these at the top of the search. And then you still have some organic uh, searches down below. You even have more, more structured data in the form of a video. So you have a video recipe now that has some of these, this structured data with each step uh, along the way. And then, you know, you get to page two, three, four, five, which we know nobody ever goes to. Um, and you have kind of some more straightforward pages that, you know, just a thumbnail, and what's on that particular page. Now you can do the same thing with uh, sports, right? We've all done this, especially if you're following anything live, you know, if you're traveling, you're trying to see what's happening with the game and you can plug it in here. This is all structured data. So the Golden Knights have and, and the NHL have set up their data in such a way that it, it makes easy work for Google to know what's going on. Um, same thing, you ever search for movie times? You're, you know, it's just a different way of, for Google to know, hey, these are, these are movies, these are movie posters, Here's you know what's what's current and uh, going on in the theaters. Now even something like this, which this is going to get really important when I show you. I'm going to show you two tips inside of Snaps today, and then happy to answer any questions that you guys might have in regards to schema. But you know if I were to search something like, hey, how do I create a Facebook business page? Uh, at first glance, this doesn't really look like there's a whole lot of structured data going on here, except this section right here. People also ask. This is an FAQ uh, piece of data, right? So I could actually click on here and this is pulling from a specific page because again, these pages, obviously Facebook has done a good job about it, but they don't even show up first. They show up second to this Oberlo uh, blog uh, has set up this page in such a way that he's, he or she's probably getting a ton of traffic, right? Just from people searching you know, how do I set up a, a Facebook business page? And the good news is you can do the same thing even with a, like a local lead gen type of site. So I'm going to um, pop back over here and see if I'm, see how, how you guys are tracking 
with all this. Let me stop my screen share here real quick and see if we've got any questions or comments coming through. Because what I'm going to show you next is actually how you can implement some structured data with snaps, both for your local lead gens and then also using something we call FAQ uh, schema. Um, not sure exactly what schema is yet, Andrew says, uh, but I filled out all my business info and clicked the connect schema button for one site so far. Awesome. So we made it easy enough that uh, Andrew doesn't even know what schema is yet. And he was able to get it connected, which I'll tell you, you're, you're going to know by the end of this live what, what schema is all about and how easy it is to set up. So glad you're able to get that, that rolling, Andrew. Um, <laughs> and then a uh, Facebook user who has not yet uh, um, granted permission to StreamYard says schema. Yum. I love it. Okay. Love me some snaps. So schema is super important for Google. Exactly. How does it affect your ranking? Um, what happens if someone ignores schema upgrades for a business? Okay, great. These are two great questions. So both Andrew and Brad have some questions about kind of like, you know, so is this super important? How does it affect your rankings? Um, and the question is, it's just another kind of, uh, another piece, another like optimization that you can make to a site. So if you have a site that's not ranking yet, that's not at the top of Google, or maybe it's getting some, some traffic or that search term is getting traffic, but you're not getting as many leads from it yet. It's just one other thing that you can kind of add to the mix. You got to think, um, from Google's perspective, what's Google trying to do? Google's trying to make money off of ads and data. So they need people to keep coming back to Google to ask for everything. And it's, it's funny how, like how many times throughout the day, like that's a lot of my job is like Googling stuff for people and then sending them those results. I don't know if, if any of you can feel me or if you've worked with anyone like that before. It's like, Hey, let, let me Google that for you. I think there's actually a site called, let me Google that for you. Um, but Google wants to make it easy for people to come back to their site. Uh, and so the more seamless they can make, somebody making, asking a question and then getting a response and that response being useful, the better it is for the Google user experience or any search engine for that matter. It's why when you look at um, audio, so I'm going to uh, turn my buzzer off here. When you look at what's happening with, you know, the Amazon Alexa and the Google home and the Apple home pod and all these things, voice search is going to become more and more prevalent. It already is, but people are already starting to search those kind of things like, Hey, you know, um, what, what's the next, uh, you know, can I get a dinner reservation at, at, you know, at X pot? Can I, um, you know, what, what, tell me the movies that are playing tonight or, you know, what time does the night's game go on? All these things that you could ask your Google home or your Amazon Alexa. The only reason, the only way those devices are able to serve up an answer is because some site has, um, created some structured data around their site. So imagine it's not going to be too far off to where, you know, someone goes, oh, shoot, you know what, the, um, uh, it looks like the, you know, the, the, the plumbing just went out or like the toilet's overflowing and the plunger's not working. Hey, Google, um, who's, who's the best, who's the best plumber in Henderson, Nevada? And, and it might give them a list, right? It might say, hey, you know, we've got Bob's plumbing, Joe's plumbing, Henderson, Nevada plumbing. Uh, you know, here's the reviews. Here's the number. What would you like me to do next? Would you like to give them a call? So having structured data on your site is going to be more and more important as things go along. Now, it may not be necessary, let's say, to get you to page one of Google or that top spot. But let me ask you this. Do you think Google is going to have a preference if they had two equal sites, one had some structured data and one didn't? Who do you think they're going to prefer? And then also from the user experience, from somebody that's searching for something and using your lead gen sites, what do you think is going to give you a better chance? So it's important to learn, learn about this stuff and stay on top of it. Again, if you're not super technical, don't like get it. We don't need to overcomplicate this. It used to be one of those things that was really kind of like complex, but you don't have to uh, anymore. And then, yeah, um, uh, Mick's, uh, uh, Mick makes a, a good comment too. Can, uh, oh, sorry, there's a question, but you're, you're correct. Yeah, can schema affect the ranking of one's GMB? Yeah, absolutely. So having some structured data around that is really important. So let me go ahead and share my screen again, and we're going to dive into snaps and show you exactly how you can use schema um, with your lead gen properties um, and or other sites on, on snaps. So I'm here in my dashboard 
which by the way, again, uh, this is going to be getting a facelift like tomorrow. I, I can't wait for you guys to see, um, the, um, the update that, that comes out. We've got some, some cool things coming out tomorrow. So stay tuned for that. Uh, I've got a couple different sites on here. Let me go down here to this, this Ben painter site that I've used and showed a couple different times, uh, because on this one, I've actually already, already enabled schema. And so I'll show you what it looks like after the fact. And then we're going to go through and actually I'm going to walk through and do a demo of how I would go about enabling schema on an existing site. So this is a pretty straightforward, uh, lead gen property, right. Um, in the, the painting niche. And like I've instructed most of you who've gone through some of my, my training, if you, if you haven't, um, by, by all means, I'd recommend doing it and kind of following along. I'm a big fan of the business info panel. So anytime I start a new site, doesn't matter if it's a lead gen site, a client site, an agency site, doesn't, you, doesn't matter. I'm going to always, always, always start at the business info panel. So you go to content and business info and this little, uh, panel really is everything to do with your, your business. Um, so everything from the name of the business, which is also what is going to show up here in the dashboard in, in snaps, you know, to your logo, which in this case case is this like click to call phone number. Um, if you have multiple locations, phone numbers, email addresses, social profiles, you name it. Uh, you also have your business images, which are important. So these images are going to be important for, for uh, schema as well too. But all I, all I needed to do was basically complete my profile, my kind of business profile. And then before there was a button here that said enable schema, I clicked that and went through the process to enable schema on my site. I can go ahead and review it here, you know, the existing schema on the site. And it's going to tell me, hey, here's all the data that snaps behind the scenes is creating this code for you, right? So you go ahead and enter the information in the business info panel, check it in here, and then we'll create the code for you. Everything from the name, address, description, logo, on, on down the line, right? So question is, how do you set up schema on a site where it's not, not, not yet set up? Let me close out of this tab and go back into the dashboard. And we're going to go dig into the Folsom cabinetry site. So I'm just going to click edit website on, this is another lead gen property. Um, schema is not, not yet set up on this particular site, but we're going to do that right now. And this, uh, this site actually already does show up at the top of uh, search for the, the city and niche that it's in, but again, still want to go through and optimize it. So I'm going to start in the same spot. I'm going to head over to content and business info, and I can click this review and enable schema. And what we're going to see is similar kind of stuff as what we saw on the Ben Painter site. I've got the name type, which for, um, just for the, the time being local business, that, that's going to be the only kind of like business type that's enabled from uh, the business info panel, which for, for most of you is fine because that's exactly what we're serving right now. Anyway, you've got uh, the, an address, which in this case is a, a, a GMB uh, address. You've got the URL uh, of the website, uh, the tracking phone number, email, logo, you name it. You can see though here, it says, hey, images for best schema results, add site images. So I don't have any images added yet. So I'm going to show you how to do that. And then it also says, hey, there's additional support fields, description, social networks, and business hours. So these are things that could be included in schema, but I don't have any information in there yet. So what I actually want to do is I want to flesh out this business profile as much as possible before I go and enable schema. Now, Andrew and the rest of you, if, if you've already gone through this process and enabled schema, it's totally fine. You can go ahead and update it. Um, but if you're starting from scratch, uh, what I would do is I would exit out of that and we would go ahead and finish out this profile. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to, if I don't, if I'm missing any information, so business name, I definitely want that. And I definitely want a logo. Those two things are very important. I'm going to want a phone number. I'm going to want an email address. And, and as you notice, I've got two here. It's pulling from the first one up at the top, which is the one that I want. Uh, if they were in a different order, I would, you know, delete the one, add the other. Um, 
let's say I have a Facebook profile. Now, just for this, I, I don't have a, a Facebook page for this particular lead gen, but I am going to pull the one from the painting site just so you can see. So I've got this facebook.com forward slash Ben paint. I'm literally just going to take what comes after the dot com and copy that and head over here to, uh, and I added a little extra forward slash. So I'm going to delete that. So I'm going to add in a social profile. If I had, you know, a Twitter or YouTube or anything like else like that for this legion, I would go ahead and add that in too. I am going to add some business hours. That's going to be pretty important. So all you do is just click this add hours button. And uh, in fact, I think we went through this uh, last, last week for Andrew on one of his restaurant uh, websites that he was building. So you can pick any days of the week. So I can say, okay, hey, yeah, we want, you know, Monday through Friday, we'll say nine to six. And then let's say on, you know, Saturday and Sunday, it's a, a you know, maybe a shorter day. Maybe it's, you know, nine to, to one. So I'd be what, 1300. All right. So now I've got some business hours. Now, a lot of you don't have a, a GMB address yet. You might be doing a quick build on one of your sites and you're just trying to, um, uh, you, you're, you're more kind of like geocentric where, or, or like city centric where you're optimizing for a particular city or area. I can go in here into the business address and just set my, uh, address as a particular city. So I don't, it doesn't have to be an actual street address unless you have one. If you have one, great. If you don't, I would just recommend putting in the city and state in here. Okay. Now it does have to be an address that pulls up from the drop down as you start typing it in. So like if I were to try to do, you know, um, let's say, you know, Main Street, Cambridge, Massachusetts, let's say, you know, this, I had a, you know, sweet number one, two, three, four, five. Unfortunately, that's not going to work. I'm not gonna be able to save that address because it's not showing, it's not pulling up from the drop down. I would have to basically remove that sweet number because what is happening here is we're trying to pull up some some uh, actual longitude and latitudinal <laughs> coordinates, which is the data that that Google looks at. They don't look at those those sweet numbers. So I'm going to go back here. I'm going to just change this to Folsom, California, nine five six three zero. I'm going to leave that zip code in there. Okay. So now let's let's go back one more time and click review and enable. And there's a there's a still couple things that we're missing, but let me show you what those are. Okay. So now we have, we have a little more information. We've got name, we've got, um, the geo coordinates that I think, you know, those actually, I think are pulling from, um, a map somewhere else on my site there. Oh no, that's just pulling city center. That's right. That's pulling city center, which is totally fine. Um, and yeah, so we've got now, now you can see we've got the social networks, Ben paint. Uh, I've got my business hours in there as well but I'm still missing the description and I'm still missing business images. And, you know, I realized, Oh shoot, this is the wrong Facebook page. I don't want that to be in there. So I'm going to go back to the drawing board. I'm going to close out of this. I'm actually going to delete that social uh, profile because I don't, I don't have a page there. So I'm going to delete that. And now I've got to go to two different places. The first I'm going to go to business images and it's giving you a note here already to let you know, hey, the first five images are going to be used for local business schema. Now, what's cool about business images, uh, if you know anything about connected data, any images that you add in here can be connected throughout the rest of your site. So you can basically link to or kind of use this as kind of some connected data in the same way that you can with your business logo. So I'm just going to add in five images from my site preferably ones that are on the homepage of your site, but really it could be any relevant images. So I'm just going to go into site images here and actually I'm just going to type in cabinet because I've got them named appropriately. So I've got this one, this white kitchen cabinet. Um, I've got this Folsom cabinetry about, I'm going to do choose this guy, three, four, and then let's maybe do one more with the person. I always like images with people and especially when they're looking in the camera. So I'm going to add all five of those to my business images because they're already uploaded. 
Now, if they weren't uploaded, I could just go ahead and upload some new images, but there, there you go. So those are all, all now uploaded. And then what I would do, honestly, I would go through and label all, all of these. So my labels, I typically pull from kind of like how I named, uh, how I named the, the image file. So white kitchen cabinet, um, we're going to say this, you know, call this Folsom cabinetry about us. And I'm just going to go ahead and add some labels and alt text to each one of these based upon kind of my, uh, keyword phrases and, and kind of what's relevant. Um, uh, let's see, we'll just call this for some cabinet resurfacing. You, you want to make sure that whatever you're using in terms of your labels and your alt text is actually relevant to the images in your site. It can't be mismatched. If it is, you are going to get penalized. So I want to make sure that this stuff kind of matches. Um, cabinet. So we already have resurfacing. I'm actually going to call this one kitchen cabinets because that's what is in the, the, the photo there, even though it's not in the title, it's, it's relevant. Um, Fulsom cabinetry, and then in this case, our business owner, it's a family owned business. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Then I would go ahead and add in my alt text, which again, just gonna be some relevant uh, metadata for each one of these photos. So I'm just going to call this kitchen cabinets, um, update cabinet doors. So I'm just doing kind of relevant to, um, new laundry room cabinets. And I'm just going to do this one kind of full some cabinetry and then about our, about uh, Folsom cabinetry. So it doesn't need to take more than a minute or two to fill this out. And you can see as I do that, each one of these gets this little green check mark. I now have five images that are going to pull into and be used for the structured data when I enable schema. Again, if you already enabled schema and you didn't do this, go back and do this uh, and you can go ahead and update the schema on your site. Okay, so I've got those images in there. There's one other piece that was called the description, um, which is not in the business info panel. That's under business text. So just like business images, business text can also be used with connected data. You can even, um, uh, oh, make sure I didn't hide my, you guys can still see me. Okay, cool. Um, uh, you can add other bits of text in here, but there are some basic ones like about us, company overview and business services. The about us is where the description would come from. Uh, and what I would do here is go ahead and write just a little about the business for sake of time here. I am going to take the first paragraph of text. I would recommend writing something unique. It doesn't have to be you know, completely different, but I would write a, a little piece of unique content that you can imagine, hey, if if someone only saw, uh, you know, a couple hundred words about your business um, when they were doing a search and they found your lead gen, what would you want them to read? You know, the most important, you know, two or three sentences, go ahead and write that and put that in here in your about us. So now I go back to business info and click review and enable one more time. And here we go. I've got the ID, which is this is automatically generated. I've got the name of my business. The type, which again is always going to be local business, at least for now. Um, I've got the address, which I said is Folsom, California, but it, it picked an address at city center based on these geo coordinates. So again, that's totally fine. If you have an actual address, you can enter it in and that should match. If you just put city center, um, it, it may pop up an address like it did here. Uh, again, I would just leave it as such. That's totally fine. The URL for our website. So obviously you're going to want to make sure and do this after you've connected your domain. So you have the correct domain. You, you wouldn't want to enable schema with the verified secure.net uh, address, unless you don't plan on using a custom domain. If you plan on keeping the verified secure.net, which is totally fine, you can, um, uh, then, then in that case, you could leave it. Obviously you want to make sure you have your, your tracking phone number. So you got your call sign number ready to go. Your email, in this case, you know, we have a custom email, but you know, you saw our other one was FolsomCabinetry at gmail.com. That would work in this place too, if I just wanted to use a free email. I've got my description is pulling in now. 
my logo, which in this case is my click to call phone number. You can see my business hours and all those images. So the only thing that I'm missing is social networks, which in this case I don't have, which totally fine. So I'm ready to go now. So I want to do one more step before I actually enable and let's hopefully hope it, it validates. Um, I'm going to click this validate with Google and it's going to say, Hey, does your page support rich results? I'm just going to click this test code and Google's going to do a quick, um, uh, uh, check for me and fingers crossed, uh, we get a good result. Awesome. We do pages eligible for rich results. So this is basically saying, Hey, you know, um, based on the data you have, we will be able to read this. So I'm going to go back to my site and literally all I have to do now is click enable schema and that's it. Boom. It's done. Um, I'm going to go ahead and republish the site. I always like to republish after I make any changes like this. And now I should be good to go. Now it might take a little while for, for Google to kind of like re-index your site and notice the schema and put it, put it to work. You, it's one of these things you're not really going to see like a visible change. There's no way to necessarily go and uh, check and see what's going on. But now your site uh, is just, again, one other thing that you've now added to the mix to kind of improve Google's experience of trying to uh, search and crawl your, your site, right? So hopefully that makes sense. I'm going to dive back into the comments here. So if you have questions, go ahead and pop them in. Now, um, after I go through some of these questions, I am going to show you um, another schema hack that I don't think many of you have stumbled onto yet, um, but is going to be, I think, a game changer. And honestly, I'm probably going to record a new training video to add into the mix to make this a part of the quick build training because um, I don't have any objective data on it yet to show how it would improve ranking and conversion. But my hypothesis as a, as a digital marketer is that this next thing I'm going to show you is going to be a game changer in terms of conversion and just making your stuff stand out against the competition. So let me um, just kind of pour through the comments here. Appreciate you guys being so um, engaged today. Um, awesome. Hey, hey, hey. Uh, what's up, Lois, Robin? Robin, love me some snaps. We love it. You love uh, some some snaps, Rob. We we, uh, we we love you and your pup. I don't. What, what's your pup's name? I feel like I need to know your pup's name because I see your 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 pup in the avatar all the time. Okay, we already went. So Hansel says I need to go check that schema button on my sites now. Yep, absolutely. And, and you know, it took me what about uh, 15, 20 minutes to walk through and show and explain everything. You could do everything I just did in like three minutes. Pre I, I, I'm pretty pretty convinced. David says, oh, snapping. Yep, glad I didn't miss this part. No worries, CJ. Yeah, glad to have you in the mix. Um, can you update the info within schema regularly with no negative implications? So yeah, Mick has a great question here. Hey, you know, I wouldn't be going in there and making changes all the time, but what I would recommend when you are initially kind of enabling schema on your site, what are you going to want? You're going to want the business name, you're going to want that call sign tracking phone number because, um, again, that's how that's that's probably the most important thing in terms of, you know, tying your domain to that phone number. Um, an address would be good, but if you don't have the address, I would at least go city center of the city that you're you're going for. There's no reason not to do the phone number. So really the things that that maybe you're not including the first time around, maybe you're not going to include the email first time around because you, you want to get that custom email set up or you're just not around to that part yet. Um, and you don't want it to slow you down. So maybe you, maybe you hold off on email. Um, maybe you hold off on a social profile. Maybe you're like, Hey, I do want to create a Facebook page for this business, but I, I don't want to go through the time of setting that up yet. So I would maybe consider making like two passes kind of all, almost the same way that I recommend building sites. I'm a big fan of going fast building a, a, a three page site with a homepage, a contact page and a thank you page, and then coming back around and continuing to flesh that site out with more content, more pages and going more in depth. I would kind of look at schema the same way where I would get the, the main stuff, business name, the, the stuff that's easy, you know, obviously pretty easy to add some images, uh, get your call sign tracking number in there. You know, those, those pieces in, uh, enable schema, and then when you're ready to finish the rest of the profile, come back around and do that a second time. So hopefully that answers your question. 
wait, why are we getting penalized again? I didn't catch that. If the name and title does not match. Oh, <laughs> Julius, don't worry. You are not getting, uh, you're, you're, you're not getting a, a, a penalized or, or you shouldn't uh, be getting penalized. I think what you were referring to is maybe, um, shoot, was that when I was talking about the, um, the, uh, the, 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 the name of the business that maybe the URL, um, is what it was a, you know, I'm sorry, Julius, I, as long as you follow and, and if you missed what I just went through, this replay is going to be available. So if you're watching us on the snaps, Facebook page, you can go back to the snaps, Facebook page and watch this when it's done forward, rewind the whole deal and catch what I said. But as long as you follow that, that process and make sure you've got, Oh, I think I know what it was. Sorry. It like totally came back to me on the uh, Facebook uh, URL. So I purposefully went and used my Bend Painters Facebook URL and put that in the profile and then went back and saw that it, uh, I was like, oh no, this is Folsom Cabinetry. So I wanna remove that. I don't, what I don't wanna do is tell Google with my structured data, this is a painting site when in actuality it's a cabinet site. You know, unless I've got painting services and pages that, that are on there. I don't want to confuse Google in that sense. Otherwise I could get penalized. It's the same thing as when, you know, um, spammers would go out and, or, and use clickbait and say, Hey, like, um, I'm going to show you how to make a million dollars. And then on the next page, it's something about buying life insurance. It's like total mismatch, right? Like a bad user experience. So don't do that stuff. Make sure that the information that you have. So like your images, when you're uploading images and you're titling them, Make sure that your titles and labels and alt text are relevant to what you have, what's actually in the images. Okay. So, so grateful for the replay. So much powerful information to digest. Yeah, no worries, Brad. Absolutely. Um, all right. Let me, we got a couple more questions in here. Andrew says, if it just pops up an address for you and you don't have a GMP, will that affect anything uh, when you do get a GMP, an address set up? No. Yeah. So what I would do, if you don't have a GMB set up yet, I would go ahead and put in city center, enable schema. And then as soon as you go and set up your GMB, change that address, enable schema on that, and then go ahead and submit for your, your GMB, if that makes sense. So I would, I would update this schema before you move forward with your GMB, if that makes sense. Um, okay. Yes. Uh, thank you. Yeah. Some of you in the, in the chat are helping to answer other people's questions. Okay. Uh, Lois is asking, um, you know, she's, uh, uh, new to this, what goes on the thank you pages. Uh, happy to show that here in, in fact, let's just, let's show it. Um, okay. Give me one sec and I'll share my screen again. So I am always a big fan of putting a thank you page just because um, if you don't, you run into what I call a lead gen dead end. So if I go back to my Bend Painter site, what I really want in, ter in terms of leads is I want people calling my tracking phone number. I don't necessarily want them filling out the form, but if they're going to fill out the form, I uh, I, I want to still get every, get every possible chance of getting them to actually place a, a phone call. So here on this site, I've got this thank you page, which after they fill out the form, they land here. And it's a very simple page. In fact, I even have indexing turned off on this page. So if I go to the SEO settings for the page, you'll see no index. This means I, I don't really care for Google to crawl this page at all because there's no content on here. It just says, hey, why wait? We'd like to help you now. Call today for a free quote. And then this is a click to call phone number, right? So uh, that's all that I usually put on a thank you page. I've done a lot with thank you pages over the years. Um, was part of a team that built a, a $25 million ad network in the financial publishing space. And a lot of our strategy revolved around what we did with the thank you page. There is a lot of money left on the table when it comes to the thank you page. And this is probably one of the simplest and easy ways to scoop up some of that extra uh, money. So hopefully that helps Lois. Okay. Can we get a schema checklist? Um, the checklist is literally in snaps. So um, I'm not sure who was asking this question again. If you, if you go to um, facebook.com forward slash stream, no, sorry. What is it? 
let me get it right. Yeah, streamyard.com forward slash Facebook and connect your Facebook to StreamYard. I'm able to see who you are and can help you out easier that way. Otherwise, I, I get this kind of generic. Um, but can we get a schema checklist? The checklist is literally part of the, the UI. So if you, meaning user interface, if you have content and you go to business info, when you click enable or review and enable, this is your checklist. These are the things that you're going to need in there. And if you're missing anything, it's going to tell you what you're missing. If you need to come in and edit this, you're just going to disable it. And then you're going to go back through the process again. Okay. Um, and that, that's not, not this, I mean, it's, again, I wouldn't make a uh, common work of it, but it's not uncommon for businesses to move and update things. And obviously you want to update your information accordingly when you do that, which is why I would probably look at doing things in two passes. You know, the first pass, getting the name, phone number, and the basic stuff out there. And maybe the second pass is when you update the, the address. Okay. Oh, I thought I, was I thought I was sharing my screen there. Sorry, I guess I wasn't sharing my screen. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, let, me, let me do this one more time. Let me share. Just so you can. Boom. All right, so when I was saying the checklist is in the UI, if you can see my screen here now, if you go to content, business info, it would say, you know, review and enable. This is your checklist. So these items right here are what you would want to have um, if you had everything. Again, it's okay if you're missing a couple things, if you're missing some social networks, if you're missing the, the actual address and you just have city center at that, that point in time. Uh, and then if you need to come back later, you would just click disable and then you would go back through the process to review and enable after you had added in that additional or updated information. Okay. All right. Uh, okay. <laughs> um, no worries. Uh, Chuck says, apologize for all the trouble I gave you with my payment difficulties. No problem. We're, we're happy to work with you. Like I said, have some, some updates coming uh, tomorrow to the Snap dashboard. Super excited about it. Yeah, exactly. David, David says, yeah, followed, you know, we're talking about the thank you page stuff followed by another invitation to call us right away. Yeah. You definitely want to give while you have somebody interested, that's the best time to can, you know, try to continue engaging. Um, and yes, city center in as in you know whatever shows up when you pop in the google city and name if you have a really big city with multiple zip codes you might even be able to like put in a different zip code to get a different center depending upon where you're optimizing your search for um unrelated to what we're talking about but delana asked will you soon have a funnel template for swag absolutely i'm actually working with ashley rybar on that right right now so for those of you that don't know um swag or promotional products are a great addition to any kind of agency business they're a really great way to get a foot in the door with a business as well too think of swag as you know just being able to put you know anything you put a logo on a hat a pen uh, a calendar a t-shirt whatever uh, businesses need that stuff all the time. And so Delena is, is one of the um, the students in that swag training with a, a swag business. And yes, we are going to have some swag funnel templates available soon. Okay. So Julius has a good question. Is the schema only showing on the back end? Meaning will potential website users not be able to see the address? I don't want to show the address because I usually get it from residential owners. Uh, now on uh, the addresses, you no, know, the, the address would only show on the site if you're displaying it somewhere on the site. Now it will be in the code of the site, but most users are not inspecting the code of the site, if that answers your question. And then Chuck asks, what do you think about using the same call sling number for multiple schemas for website being optimized? Nope, I wouldn't do it. Um, you, you need a unique phone number. Every business is going to have a, a unique URL. It's going to have a unique phone number. That name, address, phone number, the NAP, the NAP is super important to be unique. Um, you run into potential issues when you try to use the same number. The only reason I could think you might want to do that is to maybe save a couple of bucks as you're starting a business. But the, the costs associated with spinning up a business like this are so minimal and nominal. Like, 
spend the 15 bucks to get the phone number, you know, and the 12 bucks to get the site or whatever, maybe nine bucks, 10 bucks a year to get the domain. I mean, you're, you're in less than a hundred bucks and you've got everything you need to get this business up, up and rolling. Um, so no, I definitely, uh, I, I would make sure that that stuff is unique, just like it should be. I mean, again, you got to think from Google's perspective, what are they looking for when they're looking at a business and some structured data, they have some expectations on what that is. It's why, you know, a lot of times, unless you're in like a high rise building in New York, if they see on a, a geo, on a map, on a satellite map, that there's a house that has 37 businesses running out of it, what do you think they're going to do? They're probably going to suspend those businesses because it's like, it's not, it doesn't make sense. Same thing with the phone number. You want to have, um, you know, treat it like the business that it is, um, get the tools that you need for, for the job. Somebody asked, where do we add text to the pictures on our website for optimizing purposes? So I just showed that in the business images section where you can add alt text and labels. Let me do that again. Um, and there's, depending upon how you're accessing those images, it depends on where you're at. So I'm going to answer this question, then I'm going to dive back in and show you one more trick and tip uh, and hack and cheat code, whatever you want to call it. And it's, that I'm, I'm super excited to share. So in terms of the images that we had just shown, the, the three things to pay important attention to would be the label, the alt text, and in this case, and in every case, the name of the file. What's your photo named? Uh, now, if I'm working with just kind of like the general content of my site, if I go over here, you know, content and then site content, I can go to manage images. And this is probably going to be the best place for me to manage all my images on the site. So this is my painting site. So I can search for new images. So I can search for, you know, painting. Um, and, you know, this is pulling up like artistic, like art painters. I mean, I have to go like how to painter. Um, this is getting a little bit better. So now like, Hey, I could use, I could use this image right here if I wanted. Right. But you can see it's got this generic name because it's, you know, we're pulling it from our integration with unsplash. Now, if I wanted, I could, in fact, let's do this real quick. Let me add this to, let me add an image to this. Thank you page. So I'm going to go to widgets and add an image right here. And then I'm going to open up the full view. I like the full view and I'm going to look for that same one, this guy right here. Okay. So I'm going to use this free image, which I can do because snaps is awesome and gives you all these images. I'm going to use this free image. I'm probably going to scale the design down on this just a little bit. It doesn't need to be that big. Yeah, we'll go, we'll call it 500 pixels. I like even numbers. Okay, cool. Now, if I wanted to optimize this image, now I'm not going to worry about it if it's an image in the background of a row or a column, but because this is, you know, on the front of the site, I'm going to optimize this image. And the way I'm going to do that, I'm going to go to content. I'm going to go to, uh, in fact, let me do this. I'm going to go through the whole process. So actually, let's say I publish this site. So I'm going to republish. I go to Ben Painter's site. Put in my name. And let's say, okay, so I'm going to fill out this form. I click send message and it takes me through to this page. Now, if I open this, uh, what's up? Uh, if I open this uh, uh, image in a new tab, if I right click, you're going to see this um, photo name in the URL, right? So when Google is crawling my site, they're going to see the name of this photo. And that's going to, that's you know, just another piece of data to tell Google what's going on on this page. Now, again, I'm not indexing the thank you page, but if this were on a page that were important for them to be indexing, I would want to make sure, or if it were something, definitely if I was adding to my business images, I'd want them to know what it's all about. So I'm going to go back here to content, site content, manage images. I'm going to 
go uh, then to manage images because this allows me to do some things. I can organize things into folders and I can also rename my photos. So now I'm going to check this photo that I used from the free, free, free images, and I'm going to click rename. And we're just going to, you know, house painters in Bend, Redmond area. So this is like a keyword phrase, you know, that I might want to rank for, and it's relevant to, to what's actually in the image. So I'm going to rename it and I'm going to close. Now I want to show you something. If I go back to this thank you page and refresh, do a hard refresh, shift command R on a Mac. Oh, it's working. Okay. It was supposed to break this link on this photo. Sometimes it does because I changed the, the sort, like where this photo is actually referenced. Um, so quick tip, anytime you rename a photo, just to be safe, you do want to republish. Okay. Cause now I've optimized the name of that photo. In fact, if I go here and click on this, oh, it should be, oh, maybe that's why. Cause I didn't, uh, I didn't replace it with the new one. There we go. So you saw what I just did. I clicked replace. I went and found the image that's on my site. That's the new renamed version and selected it. Okay. Now I'm going to go ahead and republish. So now when I go to that page and refresh it, boom, open it in a new tab. You now have the keyword phrase in the URL. So now, Google is going to be referencing that. So it's just another, again, I wouldn't spend a ton of time on this, especially on your first pass. But if, if you've already got the site published and you're trying to optimize it and uh, get, get, you know, move up the ranks, these are little things that you can do to help an existing site move up the ranks. Now, the last thing you might want to do is, you know, add some alt text here. You know, um, I might just say exterior house painter. And, and, and by the way, too, we try to make it easy for you to get these little question marks. So, it, you know, this is telling you what alt text is all about versus tool tip if you're trying to um, uh, tell the difference. So alt text is more kind of like search engines and, and giving this is, again, a bit of structured data because Google bots, at least from what I know, they probably can, but they have, they've told us they can't you know, read visuals. They only read code. So you're trying to tell them what's going on in this photo, whereas the tooltip is for the actual user visiting your site. Um, uh, uh, painter on, uh, or we'll call this Bend Oregon Painter Pro. So if someone were to hover, hover over this image, this is what they're going to see. I don't want to show a caption. It would show that caption then below the image, and I'm not interested in showing a caption here. So that is how you would go about, um, uh, what's the word, um, optimizing your images on your site. Hopefully that helps. So with that, I'm going to uh, pop this down. I'm going to head back into Snaps here, and I'm going to show you something that I think is going to be a game changer. Um, and I, I want, when I'm done with this, I would love nothing other than, you know, over the next day or two, for you guys to share your examples of using this particular feature. Um, on your homepage, your site, it might be a good idea to put an FAQ. And if not on the homepage, maybe on um, a different page that isn't you know, an FAQ by itself, and if a frequently asked questions page or you know, under the services, you, you name it. In this case, I'm gonna do one here on the homepage. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into widgets and I'm going to search the accordion widget. And I'm going to drop that right below all my services. So up here, I've got all these different services. And then down here in the accordion, I am going to have a frequently asked questions. So things like how much does it cost to paint to uh, hire 
a professional painter. Um, can I paint my vinyl kitchen cabinets? And then maybe say, um, what's the best time of year to resurface my deck? So let's say these were all questions that in my research, in my due diligence, I realized that people were asking. And I wanted to create kind of an FAQ out of this. You know, I would probably do something like this. I would take this kind of title, um, copy that. We'll paste that right above here. And we'll just say FAQs. Or you know, since we've got all this space, I might as well say frequently asked questions. And now I've got these FAQs that when somebody clicks on this little down arrow on this accordion widget, it's going to expand the answer, right? And then I'm going to take some time to write out the answer and drop it here in the description. Now you can add as many questions as you would like. You, you, know, you can toggle so that the first one is automatically expanded or not. I like this only show one expanded. It gives you kind of a cool feature when someone's clicking through, you know, they're, they only have one that they're focusing on at a time, but you'll notice we've got schema. You can enable FAQ schema on, um, on your page here, which if you remember one of the examples that I showed you earlier, let me just do a, a Google search for it again. Um, how do I create a Facebook business page? Remember, we saw some search results in the form of an FAQ, right? Now, just by simply adding the accordion widget and enabling schema does not guarantee that your, your question is going to show up in search like this, but it certainly can't hurt and it's going to give you an edge. And all you have to do is literally check that little box and republish your site. And what Snaps is going to do is behind the scenes, we're going to serve up the code to tell Google this block of content is an FAQ. And it's an FAQ that is going to fall in line with, you know, the type of site you have, which is going to have to do with your other schema, uh, your local business schema that you've enabled, all the content on your site you know, the SEO of your site based upon, you know, your site title and description. So make sure you have these things set up first before you add an FAQ schema. Now you can add the FAQ and just wait to enable schema until after, but make sure you've got your site title, your site description, make sure you have enabled, uh, you know, local business schema on your business info here. And once you've done that, consider adding an FAQ to your homepage. Um, and then as soon as you do, all you have to do is click on this and enable FAQ schema. If you already were using the accordion widget somewhere on your site, um, when you log in, you should see uh, an option to update the widget. And when you update the widget, you would then be able to enable schema. Okay. So hopefully you guys like that little, little tip, that little uh, cheat code on uh, being able to now, oh, not, I don't want to stop. I don't want to stop share. That's right. Well, there we go. I need to learn how to do this like command central thing. Uh, this is a little bit new for me, but hopefully it's going well. Um, uh, Brad says, great training. Awesome. Thanks, man. Glad, glad you love it. And um, somebody asked, hey, can you add a thank you page to the quick site template? I believe there's one in there already. I could be wrong, but I think... I'm pretty sure there's a contact page and a thank you page on there. If not, we will definitely add that in because it should be in there. Apologize if it's not. I really, I, I believe it is. Um, awesome. <laughs> uh, I don't know if I would, Taylor asked a pretty funny question. I, I kind of want to show it, but I, uh, you know, might, might as well because I've got four kids and this is kind of like their sense of humor. So do you, yeah, I'm just going to leave that one there and, and hide that. Yep. Uh, I'll, I'll leave that. Um, I read accordions. Uh, yeah, exactly. So Chuck's saying, Hey, I read accordions are not search engine friendly and it's better to keep FAQs bare. Um, well now with schema, you can tell the, uh, you can tell Google what, 
what it's all about and it will structure that data for you and make it easier for you to crawl. So now you have a really cool user experience and you have a way of telling Google that this is an FAQ. So use the widget. Hansel says, yeah, wow, this is awesome. Thanks uh, uh, for this, loving the Snaps platform, awesome. FAQs placement better on homepage versus its own. John, it really just comes down to like, uh, you know, how fast can you get it published? I would probably, honestly, I would do both. There's no reason not to have on your homepage those top three, four questions that people are asking when they are searching for your service, put that on your homepage. But I'm sure there are FAQs that go along with each additional page and service that you have as well too. So just look at it as another option to include on those different pages. But at a bare minimum, yeah, I would, I mean, if you're gonna wanna have, you know, 1,500, 2,000, 2,500, a bunch of words. I mean, I know we all know pros like Damien uh, in, in one of the training groups that we're a part of. Uh, Damien's out of South Florida. Guy owns, I, th I think, well over 100 lead gents. I'm pretty sure he's in the in the Century Club. I know has a pretty incredible agency business that he runs, big team. And he has tons of content on his homepage. He's all about, one, doing really good due diligence, and two, these like really big homepages. So this is an awesome way to do that with FAQs. Yep, exactly. Uh, FAQ scheme is a nice little feature. Another way to add keyword-rich content. It, absolutely. People, if any of you guys have looked at Answer the Public before, answerthepublic.com is a really great resource. Someone can drop that into the comments, answerthepublic.com. It's a great place to do keyword research. When you're trying to find out what is the what's the public asking about this particular service, go drop that into Answer the Public. It's going to give you all the questions that you would need to answer in an FAQ. Your job is already done for you there, right? Okay. Got a couple of more. Cool, cool. Yeah, Hansel, hopefully I answered your, your question on that already. This is fantastic. Thank you. Got to go fix up my sites. Yeah, me too. Awesome. We went um, a little bit over today. I am trying to keep these tight and action packed so you guys can get back to work um, inside of 30 minutes or so. But let me know how you like... Um, this new format, um, asking questions and being able to pop in. Hopefully it was pretty seamless for you guys. Again, we've got a lot coming down the pike. In fact, if you just, oh wait, it's over here on this side. If you look right here, there we go, right there. <laughs> you might see a little something different, um, you know, with what's going on with Snaps and there's a, there's a lot more to come from it. I was actually talking with our development team today about a a credit system for a new tool that we're going to be rolling out here pretty soon that basically based on the number of sites that you have published inside of snaps, you're going to get some additional bonuses and credits to use this other tool. So have a lot coming down uh, the pike for you guys. So with that, uh, oh, oh, we might have one more question. Wait, um, under, let's, let's see what uh, Steven says. Sorry if you covered this already in schema under the address field, what should you put if the address shouldn't be listed? Yeah. So, Steven, if you have uh, a, an address that you don't want to actually show on your website, which is fine, you know, I, I run a home-based business, so I'm not going to put my home address on the front page of my website, although I do use it for tax purposes and with the state and all those kind of things, right? And to get my GMB postcard, like I'm going to use my home address, but I don't want to show it. So you can put your address in your business info panel and you can use that for schema just don't show it anywhere on your site. It's that simple. Yes, it would be in the code of your site. Technically, somebody could go to the site if they're kind of inspecting the code and they could see it, um, but it's not going to visually show by somebody just visiting. So uh, as long as you don't connect in text to that address um, or you know manually type it in or display it on your site, you would be fine. I would I would include it though in your your schema for for that purpose and. You know, if you're worried about it, then, you know, maybe just do the city center. Again, just put city, state or city, uh, city zip code state and uh, go that way. So with that, I will leave y'all um, until next time. Again, let me know in the comments how you like this. If you're watching the replay, let us know uh, how, how you liked it. And then, yeah, would love to see some examples of people using 
uh, the FAQ schema. Obviously, I know we're all going to be doing it with the local business and the business info panel, but um, please share share some examples of that. Would love to see you know if, if and how that makes kind of the, the the difference on kind of rankings and conversion. And as we get more objective data on that, we'll certainly be sharing it. Um, 100% know that the local business schema is is an absolute must. Google already told us that you know that's what they want to see. You know, with the FAQ piece, it seemed like kind of a cool um, strategy that we could implement. And uh, yeah, like I said, as we get more data on it, we'll share that with you. Be looking out tomorrow for some updates in the dashboard. And with that, I will leave you to it. Have a great rest of your whatever it is, Wednesday, and we'll catch you later. All right, guys.